Hey guys, in this video, we are going to talk about how we can create a medical rack question answer, something like this, where a user can input a query and get the answer like this. And they can also go through the chunks uh, which have been extracted from the retrieval and which has helped the large language model to create and get the answer. So let's quickly check the architecture of this application. So we have used large language model Biomistral for the synthesis of the retrieval chunks. We have used vector DB quadrant and we have used PubMed BERT base embedding for the embeddings. So if you go to Biomistral 7B on Hugging Face and um, you will go through the abstract of it, you will realize that this model has been extensively trained on healthcare and medicine. And this line basically tells you that it is utilizing Mistral as its foundation model and further retrained re on PubMed Central. And if we check the PubMed BERT embeddings on Hugging Face, we'll realize that this model has been extensively trained on PubMed title abstract pair along with similar title pairs. So we are going to use this embedding in our example. And if we come down, we'll see the evaluation results where it has been compared with some uh, popular embeddings like all mini LM L6, BG base EN 1.5. Next, we'll talk about quadrant vector DB. So if we go to their website, quadrant.tech will see that the vector db powering the next generation of ai applications with advanced and high performance vector similarity search technology uh, we can use docker to pull the image and run the container in this example that's what we are going to do we'll have the docker installed and we'll uh, run the docker of quadrant container so one can also go through their benchmarking vector databases where they have uh, this kind of a comparison which has been updated on January 2024. And these are the benchmarking parameters they have used. And if we go down, we can see that they have compared their self with Elasticsearch, Redis, VV8 and Milvus on different different parameters and uh, you can see like in most of the parameters they are doing very well so before i go forward just wanted to tell you that we are going to do the coding part in jupyter notebook for the better explanation and clarity and then once the rack pipeline is completed i'll copy this code and we will create the streamlit application so those who are mostly interested in streamlit application development, they can skip this part. Okay, so let's jump into the coding part. So these are the pip install packages which we need for this example. And these are the import statements. We are basically using quadrant client, chat open AI, retrieval from Langchain, and unstructured file loader to basically read the PDF file. We have taken this PDF file. I'll just quickly show you what it is about. So I went to PubMed website and I searched for neuroscience. Those who don't know about PubMed, they can search on ChatGPT, our new Google search, because nowadays we prefer more, uh, you know, asking things on ChatGPT instead of Google. But anyways, so PubMed is a free search engine accessing primarily the Medline database of references and abstract on life science and biomedical topics. So I thought like this is the uh, best, you know, platform to get some kind of uh, use cases which will be helpful for us in this example, which we are working on. So if we search for neuroscience, uh, we'll get these many results. I chose integration of optogenetics with complementary methodologies in system neuroscience. And once you click on free full text, you will come to this page. Again, to get the PDF, you have to click on this PDF.
you just have to save it and get back here so once we have uh, the pdf we will load it using the unstructured file loader and you can see the content of the page it's huge right if we come to this part of the code as i have already told that i'm using lm studio and in the lm studio you can see here this is the lm studio uh, the biomestral 7b uh, bit 4 guf is already running here is a quadrant configuration where we are creating quadrant client and embeddings we are passing it to the quadrant object and we are also providing the collection name next we are creating the prompt template and we are making sure that it doesn't hallucinate we are passing the prompt into the prompt template next we are creating the text splitter giving the chunk size as 1000 and chunk overlap as 100 and we are getting the chunks we are passing these chunks into the quadrant so the moment this code executes right we can visualize what will happen here all these chunks will get converted into embeddings and these embeddings will get saved into the quadrant vector db server right now in the retrieval part we are going to pass on the prompt to create a chain type and then we pass it to the retriever and we are making sure that top k is 5 and the search type is mmr once we have the retrieval q and a object created we can pass the query now for the query what i did is because of my limited knowledge on the neuroscience or you can say no knowledge about the neuroscience i went to this pdf i took the abstract copied it and pasted it into the chat gpt and then i asked like provide two questions from the below text not more than 20 words and then basically you have the two questions ready okay so let's take the first question and we'll paste it here and let me run the whole Jupyter Notebook. I'll clear out the previous logs from LM Studio. As you can see, it is executing all these cells one by one, and uh, it is pushing the embeddings to the vector DB this might take some time the moment it will execute this line it will create this collection in the vector db so we can see this is the collection and this is the collection information and uh, these are the page contents all these are the chunks and all these chunks have this page content now if we go back to jupyter notebook we can see that it has started executing So what we did is uh, think of it we are a user and we are asking a question this question uh, is converted into chunk and then it uh, converted into embedding and it got there in the vector db and uh, the similarity search will happen here
and then we will get some top k so in our case top k is top five so we'll get five you know chunks of it and then the large language model will process these uh, chunks and give us the answer in our case the large language model is running on lm studio so we can see that it has already uh, spilling out the answer and now we have the answer the development of opto genetic technique is a rapidly evolving field in neuroscience so now that we have the rack pipeline ready what we are going to do is we'll take this code and create a streamlit application so let's quickly go through the streamlit application code so we have four files app.py lmservice.py readme and requirements.txt so we have a file uploader and it accepts only pdf we pass it on the uploaded pdf and uh, we call the load pdf so in the load pdf which is uh, written in the lm service we are creating a temp file so the reason of creating a temp file is an unstructured file loader is not compatible with streamlit application directly so we have to create a duplicate file and then we have to take the temp file path so we are passing the temp file path to the file loader and getting the documents out of it once we get the documents out of it we are passing it on to create a knowledge base and the knowledge base is also having the logic where we are creating a recursive character text splitter and we are splitting the documents into chunks and then we are passing these chunks and creating the embeddings and saving it into the quadrant vector db then we are letting the user ask a query and while clicking the submit button this query is going to the get response which is again defined in llm service we are creating a retriever logic here in get response and passing the prompt we are passing the large language model retriever and we are keeping the verbose equals to true so that we can uh, see the outputs and once we get the response we are extracting the answer out of it and to get the source document or the chunks we are looping through the source docs here and once we get these response and source document in the app.py what we are doing is we are directly showing the answer to the user using the st.write but with the source document we are basically looping it through using the st.expander we are asking the user to expand it to see the chunks so for this case we have top equals to or k equals to five so we are showing five chunks let's quickly test this application what we'll do is we'll take the questions which we got by you know by submitting the abstract from the pdf previously so we'll do a question answering task how has optogenetics evolved to mimic natural activity patterns and we are expecting an answer with the retrieved chunks so here's the answer and these are the chunks which have been retrieved We'll take the second question. We'll ask it here. Submit. So, what technologies have 
complemented optogenetics in recent years for physiological understanding and we got the answer the answer is quite short and straightforward natural and inuit ops in diversity and the chunks which have been retrieved are these chunks that's it guys for this video in the next video i will compare biomistral with the mistral on similar kind of use cases be it like pharma or biomedical uh, data set and we'll try to you know conclude that whether the biomistral outperform the mistral and i hope you like this video and if you liked it please thumbs up and subscribe the channel thank you guys have a nice day bye